So I know a lot of people are aware of what happened in Florida this week and terrible tragedy, horrible thing. And as somebody who loves you, it's very hard to see this. And unfortunately, it's not the first one, and it's not going to be the last one. It may not even be the last one this year. And it it's sad. What I think is sadder still is the way people, so many are reacting to it. Our hearts should be broken. We should be grieving. We should be upset. Absolutely. And my heart breaks for the families, for those who've lost loved ones, for those that are suffering through this time. But I think we need to be very careful as well about our reactions because it's easy to take something like this and immediately jump onto our political bandwagons, whether it's pro-guns and you know all our teachers should be armed and therefore they could defend themselves, or anti-guns. If we get rid of every single gun, then we won't have this issue. I'll be honest, I don't know that either one of those are the issue, and I don't think it's the appropriate time. One of the things that's frustrated me anytime we've had this is you get a big, huge jump on the bandwagon right afterwards, and then a month or two later, nobody talks about it anymore. And that's not going to be what fixes a problem like this. We need to look at what the root causes are and how to deal with those root causes and prevent things like this. And a gun isn't the root cause, and taking it away isn't the root cause. It makes something like this easier. And yes, it's something that we probably should deal with at some point instead of just ignoring it. But we need to dig deeper. Because it's a deeper issue. See, back when I was in school, a long time ago, 30 plus years ago, guns and knives at school weren't as big a deal. I always carried a pocket knife from the time I was in second, third grade. I actually even had my little toad and chip from Scouts that gave me permission to carry a knife. And it was no big deal. It was a tool, and I used it for things. And I would pull it out at school, in class, and use it. Nobody thought a thing about it back then. Even guns? Okay, we didn't carry guns into class. But we had some kids at school that were hunters. And they would have guns in their cars and keep them locked up. By the time I got to high school, it started to change a bit. Where I grew up, we had started to get infiltrated by the Bloods and Crips, and they had begun to fight. And because of that kind of atmosphere and the people associated with that, the whole idea of having a gun for hunting changed. At least in my community, and it began to. And I haven't even really thought about that until now and, and how it did change. But we begin to think of guns not just as hunting tools, but as weapons against other people in our community. And over time, more and more we have gotten away from what they are for, at least how many people use them, and we forgot. See, when I was in school... Back in the 80s, we didn't have shootings. We didn't have these mass killings. There were still automatic weapons. People could still get them, but you didn't have them going out and shooting people. At least not like now. So what else has changed? Well, if you've also noticed in that 30 plus years, our whole society has also made a shift away from God and from biblical values. And that doesn't mean we were perfect. Oh, goodness, no. That We've always had a ton of issues we need to deal with that weren't biblical and godly. But we've gotten to a point in our society where we've begun to reject a lot of them. And instead, we follow after our own selves and we've devalued human life. We've devalued the life of other people around us. And I'm not going to blame video games, but at the very least, they're a symptom of it. Because it's become nothing in a video game, not just to shoot other people, but to make sure it's as gory and bloody and explosive as possible. Um, and, you know, I, I can even point to some of the games I play. But again, it's not just games. It's our society as a whole. 
and I think that as we've turned away from God and we've rejected, other people have become less valuable, less important, and we've dehumanized them. They're no longer even people in our eyes. They're robots or, you know, especially even with the rise of the internet. We see people talking online and they're not people, they're just names and face faces and they may as well be robots or program things. And you can see even the way we treat people online, we're just so rude and cruel and mean. We've got these huge anti-bullying campaigns and they're utterly worthless because bullying is worse now than it ever was. And we also don't even teach people how to deal with a bully other than report them. Well, that doesn't stop bullying. It doesn't help people stop bullying. I, I'm reminded of Jesus' words in John chapter 10 where he says, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. And here's the verse that really kind of gets me. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And here's the truth. Our society now is pursuing the thief. Who's the thief? Well, it's Satan. And he keeps laying out all this stuff before us. You want this. You want things. You want popularity. You want fame. You want money. You want power. You want to do stuff that gratifies you and makes you feel happy in the moment. And the truth is, he's stealing our real life. He's stealing our real joy. He's leading us into things that kill us and destroy us in our society. And he's been extremely successful about it. People don't get along anymore. It's me versus everybody else. My view is the only right one, and you're evil because you dared to disagree with me. And because I don't like you, it's okay for me to kill you. And you say, oh, we, you know, we don't really believe that. Read what people say online. How many times have we seen people bullied into suicide because people tell them, just go kill yourself, you're worthless, because they're different? How many times do we see the Republicans and the Democrats say that people should just die? Back when Obama was president, how many Republicans prayed for Obama to die in office? And now how many Democrats are doing the same thing to Trump? It's evil. We should never be praying that somebody dies. And yet we excuse ourselves for it. We're following the path of the devil. We're following the path of evil instead of the path that God has given us. To love our enemies. To bless those who curse us. To do good to those who steal from us. To loan without expecting to give things to get things back or be repaid. We're in it for ourselves and not for anybody else. So how can we turn around and stop things like this from happening? It begins with us. It begins with a conscious choice to see those people that we may not want to associate with, that we may want to write off, and to notice them, and to love them, and to care about them. I can't help but think we don't know what's happened with this killer, but with other things in the past, what would have happened if somebody had reached out and loved these people who committed the crimes? We don't still don't know what happened with the guy in Las Vegas. But did he have people that were speaking love and hope in his life? I think back to Columbine and the two kids who did that. They were outcasts. What would have happened if people had loved on them? and shown Christ to them. What would happen if the church and people who call themselves Christians truly loved other people like Christ has taught us to do? What if instead of slamming other people, we actually sacrificed our own desires for their well-being? What if we truly loved? Would it make a difference? Can we reclaim what we used to have? Can we, better yet, go even better and further beyond and be what Christ has called us to be? I challenge you today. 
take your role in helping to prevent something like this and look for those people around you who may be outcasts, who may feel like they're rejected and shunned and alone. And step out of your comfort zone, out of your bubble, and go love them. Because you never know, you may be saving lives. You may be preventing another massacre. And you'll be doing what God has asked you to do. Love those around you.